and good afternoon guys it's working bringing you a quick update on bitcoin hope you guys are having a wonderful afternoon and uh, happy fourth of july for those of you living in the states uh happy independence day uh we're looking at bitcoin to the u.s dollar four hour chart on coinbase last time we spoke guys bitcoin was huddled right around eleven thousand five hundred. we were looking for a potential uh rejection or break to the upside to close that gap on cmes guys did end up breaking up to close that cme gap and uh which you know has now closed and of course it's no surprise as we warned about that we're finding resistance right at the top of where that CME gap got filled. Let's go ahead and switch over to the CME chart real quick. Uh, we can see we had the gap sitting right here between about uh, 11,500 and 12,000 on the CME chart, 12,080. Somewhere thereabouts, guys, a little bit lower on spot charts. But uh, we can see that we are literally almost to the dollar. I mean, I mean, it's just it's just amazing how it respects this uh, this resistance area, guys. But uh, again, I had warned about this. This was denoting an area of very, very likely... Um, some sell orders that's why when we broke up here guys found some major resistance for about let's see what was that one two three four yeah almost 24 hours finding major resistance there and we just broke up finally closed that gap um about uh what was that 16 17 uh uh, 16 uh, to 20 hours ago, somewhere thereabouts, and of course it's been huddled right below that area ever since, waiting on a decision. So heading back to the spot chart, looking at uh, looking at price, guys, we can see that we have created a series of lower highs here. We do have this, what I believe is a very relevant trend line here, um, that if price does break above, it's certainly going to get my attention. Um, but the area that I'm watching here on spot charts is going to be that $12,000 area. I do believe if $12,000 does decisive, $12,000 does decisively break, uh, by decisively, I mean a four hour open and close above that 12,000 area. I do believe at least 12,800 is in play, likely 13,000, um, if not the uh, the prior high at 13,800. Again, I'm a more conservative trader, guys. Um, so again, if we, if, but that would be a more that would be more of a a, a risky play, but also with a lot more reward. If you want more con, uh, confirmation, if you're playing this more conservatively, guys, you're going to want to wait for a break of this prior high, and that sits at about twelve thousand four hundred dollars. So a more conservative play if we do decisively break above 12.4 again by decisive i mean a four hour open and close above 12,400 we do take out this high then again uh, 12.8 would be the next stop but i do think very very likely 13,000 is going to be the next primary target um, but uh, again i would i would call that the first target second target being about 13,500 third being 13,800 and of course we very likely um, obviously if we take that out guys we're going to be coming up much much higher as i pointed out before the next major resistance above 13,800 and what do we come up here 13,880 somewhere thereabouts is going to be about $16,200 now do we have any resistance in between 13.8 and 16.2 if we go here to the daily We can see that we do have. I mean, there, there's certainly we can we certainly can see that we do have a lot of buy sell orders um, sitting right around 14.8. Uh, so 14.8 very likely are going to get some kind of a reaction around 14.8. But uh, again, the next the next major target is going to be up here about 16.2. Um, so I would, if we did break that zone, guys, I would very likely, um, even if it did hit that 14.8 zone and start to consolidate or even reject slightly, I would likely just increase my stop loss rather than closing my position. Again, with all eyes sitting on 16.2. If for some reason it drops back down, again, that's why you have a trailing stop loss. If it does continue, that's why you didn't close your position. Looking to the downside, if we do end up breaking down below 11,500, I do think it'd be a, a decisive break. I want to be clear. A four hour open and close below 11,500, I do think a very likely drop to at least 11,000 uh, becomes more probable than not. But the major zone that I'm going to be watching for a um, continuation to the downside if we do break it is going to be about 10,700 to 10,650 if you want to be a little bit more uh, conservative. That does break down guys and of course we're very likely are going to come back down and test this 9,950 um, dollar area possibly even below that. We have to kind of wait and see how it plays out at that point guys but those are the those are the the targets to the upside and to the downside that I'm watching. And if we zoom in here on the hourly, I usually don't like to do that. Uh, but zooming in here on the hourly, nonetheless, it does look like we are creating kind of a descending, broadening wedge. Does look like price seems, actually, let me draw that a little bit better. Does look like price is 
respecting that fairly well as of now. We did get that drop just recently. It respected that uh, resistance, uh, or excuse me, that support fairly well. Typically, this would break to the upside. So, you know, if I had to pick a bias, which again, I, you know, as I said, I'm a little bit more agnostic in this, guys. I truly am. But if I did have to pick a bias, it would have to be to the upside just based on this current consolidation here. Um, but again, I'm only looking on the, uh, you know, if I was seeing this on the four hour, I would absolutely say a very likely a break to the upside. But looking at this on the hourly, I'm a little bit more hesitant to make a call. Now, going from our swing low to our swing high, let me just grab the fib. I usually don't do this on the smaller time frames, guys, but just, uh, yeah, I mean, we're sitting, we're literally dancing right on top of the 236. Nick's target, as I said, would be right around 11,000. That jives fairly well with the 382 there. And of course, the next area that I told you, the major area I'm going to be watching is right around 10,650-ish. That kind of lies right around the, uh, the 618, more or less. So those targets are... Uh, are pretty good from what uh, from what I can tell. Let's go ahead and zoom back out to the four hour very quickly. And zooming out to the four, going from the uh, prior swing low to that swing high, um, we can see that we are uh, trading right in between the uh, 382 and the 236 guys again dancing right on top of the 236 in this case so that does that does imply that 11,500 is a very very significant zone if we did decisively break below that again that would imply a drop to as we said earlier at least 11,000 but looking at this fib guys the next major drop would be right at that 10,650 10,700 dollar mark so that is going to be a very critical zone that does break down guys and as you can see very likely drop down to about 10,000 where that six fib is going to be waiting. 10,000 does break down guys and of course I'm going to be eyeballing that $9,400 zone which we've been eyeballing for quite some time now. All right very quickly looking at the daily uh, we can see that we are uh, we are well above not well above we are right above the eight day EMA there we did just break above it yesterday uh, found support as we talked about bounced right off that 21 day EMA guys wicked below it but the body bouncing right below it getting no decisive break and actually no close below it at all extremely extremely bullish sign now we are running into an a um, a decent uh, a decent resistance and you know as I pointed out guys this this was expected this was certainly not unexpected we knew this was going to be this was that gap on CMEs we knew there were going to be a lot of sell orders here we knew it was going to require a whole lot of momentum to break above this and of course if we look at this guys what does this tell you right here you know we can see that we wicked right into it here we're finding resistance right into this here and if I and if I zoom into the four hour we're seeing something similar where we wick 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 a little bit of a close in there but of course a strong rejection came back up rejection 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 so again what does this tell you this tells me this is a supply zone again there's still a lot of sell orders here it's still gonna take a lot of momentum to break up above this a, a big increase in volume big in, uh, increase in buying pressure to break above this but if that does happen if we can take this out guys it does indicate you know, we, we may end up getting a very, very strong move to the upside if the bulls can pull this off. But again, why I'm, why I'm agnostic, guys, we can see this does look like a, a, you know, almost a classic double top that would indicate a break to the downside. Um, now we are seeing, uh, we are seeing the, looking at this is on the four hour now, we are seeing the eight period above the 21, above the 55. That typically is a bullish sign. Um, so let's actually, let me, let me zoom in here to the hourly. And again, I usually don't look at the hourly here uh, much at all, especially when regarding moving averages and exponential, but uh, it does look like it's wanting to move here. Bollinger Bands are constricting again, does look like, does looking like it wants to move and that's actually interesting we can see that we we are just having a fresh cross of the uh, 50 simple above the 200 simple now again we're only talking about the hourly guys so please keep this into perspective this is not on a higher time frame um, typically the lower the time frame guys the the less significant it is to the overall trend that being said that fresh cross of the 50 above the 200 moving average um, I mean if we look back here when we had this death cross that was a continuation to the downside last time we had a fresh cross to the upside on the hourly was all the way back here Wow, actually further than I expected. All the way back here when price was sitting at about 7,800. So we were basically flatlining. Let me just zoom in here. We were basically flatlining here. We had that fresh cross to the upside, and that did give you a very, very, very nice entry signal if you were watching it for this incredible move we've had all the way up to that $13,800. So, you know, again, we're only looking at the hourly guys that that is that is a bullish sign, but again, we don't really have much confirmation. I typically would want to see this continue this this 50 move uh continuing to move above this 200 for at least 2 to 3 hours before I would call that really a a, conf a, a confirmed um 
uh, golden cross up to the upside here on the uh, on the hourly. So let's wait and see how this ends up playing out. Let's go ahead and check the daily, or excuse me, the weekly. We already did the daily. Let's check the. Uh, Come on, internet connection, why are you not working? There we go. We are stretching the uh, upper Bollinger Bands here on the weekly chart, guys. Again, that is a bullish sign of strength. Uh, we do have, after this just terrible, terrible bearish looking cross last week, guys, we do have some, uh, we do not have any follow through as of yet. In fact, it is looking very, very bullish as of right now, this current um, current uh, current weekly. Now, again, that that could get rejected at any point in time. I don't want to, I don't want you to get too excited here, guys. You know, it's not until we do take out this prior high that things start to get, uh, things, you know, we continue to the upside there, but it would not be in, in insignificant to take out that $12,500 zone, guys. That would not be insignificant at all. In fact, that would, in my opinion, almost solidify the fact that we are going to take out this 13,500 or 13,000. In fact, I will believe we're going to take out 13,800 if we do take out that 12,500 decisively. It doesn't mean we will, just means that's where my bias is going to shift. So to wrap things up in a bow, guys, I'm watching this trend line very closely. If you are wanting to front run, if we do get a decisive break, you could even say above this trend line, guys, that may be a signal to front run if you want to take on a little more risk. But again, if you if you want to be, uh, if, if you're a little, uh, um, if, you, if, you, if you're not so much of a risk taker, guys, wait for the decisive break above 12,400. If you do decide to front run this, have a very, very tight stop loss. Just please make sure you have a very tight stop loss because if we do decisively take out 11,500, things could get ugly very, very quickly. And if we take out 10,650, 10,000, 700 things very likely will get fairly ugly. All right, I'm going to go ahead and wrap Bitcoin there. Let me quickly go over some of your comments here. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jay says, give it time. You'll have 20K following. One of the best on YouTube. Thank you, Jay. I appreciate that. Um, Annalena says, uh, I didn't get out. Thank you. Now waiting for the pullback and no offense taken. <laughs> Thanks, Annalena. That was regarding me mispronouncing her name last time. All right. Bullguy says, humble, highly skilled, and a great human touch. Definitely work. Uh, definitely working for everyone. Thanks. Hey, thank you very much. That means a lot, man. Thank you. Uh, Crypto Mason says, uh, so dedicated to your work, thank, uh, work uh, to your work working. Thanks, buddy. Thank you, Crypto Mason. Uh, Josh says, love your work. Really like your comment section live stream. Gives everybody a chance to ask legitimate questions. That's the goal, man. Thanks, Josh. All right, Flynn Wolf says, thanks for working, uh, used your techniques and TA to learn how to, how to uh, look at charts, uh, was able to almost pick the bottom of the last dip and accumulate. That's awesome, man. Congratulations. I'm glad you're here and I'm glad you're learning. And by the way, for those of you that are new, and I know this is not going to be most of you here, but for those people that are just getting into trading and actually having a tough time reading these charts, I am going to put out a video on how to read candlesticks. That's going to be very, very basic. It's just going to give those that are just getting interested, not so much for trading, but more for, um, in, more for investing more for longer term holds just to get an idea of how to read a chart. I am going to put out the basics on how to read a candlestick chart here very soon. In fact, I may put it out uh, later on today or tomorrow. So uh, keep an eye out for that. Again, it's not going to be for those of you that are traders already. It's going to be for those people that are just learning how to read the charts. All right. Annalita says again, uh, working, you are not an idiot. We all make mistakes. We're human beings and don't mean, uh, don't be mean to yourself. Thanks. Yeah, that was regarding the CMB gap. Uh, that was completely my fault, guys, the other day, which was obviously this is what I was referring to when I uh, uh, when I said that on the chart, admitting I was wrong. Uh, let's see. Handy Rim says, "I don't know. This rally has look uh, is still looking pretty good. Yeah, it's it's certainly stalled right now, but uh, it certainly does look like it has the potential to break up and break up uh, very very significantly if it can take out that supply zone." Uh, Nicola K says, "Thank you. You're welcome, Nicola. Thanks for always stopping by, man." Cloud the Chicken says, "Hey, working. Where did you learn how to TA?" Um, yeah, I answered your question. Uh, that was uh, basically a. Um, I've, I've trading for quite some time, but basically learned how to do it. Uh, I had a medical issue, was out of work for quite some time, had nothing else to do uh, but learn, and that's kind of how I how I learned to trade. I, I recommended a couple books. I know you asked it, or, or asked it. Did I just say asked it? I know you asked for um, some recommendations on reading material. I gave you some of those recommendations. Uh, let me know what you think. Um, but uh, in fact, for those of you that are interested, gave you some recommendations. If you want to look under uh, Claw the Chicken, uh, you can read kind of how I got to where I am. And you can also read the uh, recommendations on reading material if you are interested. All right, uh, Robert uh, Parrott says, never trade while drinking. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, man. It can be rough if you trade while drinking. All right, Kevin Roberts says, pennant. Uh, yeah, that was referring to that prior breakout. And yeah, it absolutely was a little bit of a breakout there. Uh, Nicholas, um, Alco says, uh, oh, thumbs up. Thanks, Nicholas. Uh, Lord of the Turtles says, holy crap, I'm selling. I don't want to have uh, to have blood on my hands. I don't want to pay taxes and fees. Oh, I remember this guy. Yeah, I don't know what you're referring to here. Taxes and fees, China, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, I don't know if you're paid to... Uh, to, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe one of the altcoins guys pays you. I don't know what your deal is, man, but uh, very, very strange. 
Uh, I'm not even going to acknowledge that. JK says, uh, got Steve Circles uh, two weeks ago, something else if you want to take a look. Yeah, I'm not, I can't I can't click on any links, guys. My security settings won't let me. Uh, so if you do uh, if you do have a link, JK, let me know. If you are, if you are wanting me to take a look at something, uh, kind of give me an idea of what it is, um, and then we'll, uh, we'll figure it out. All right, JK says, my magic ball tells me that... Uh, at 12 o'clock today, we're going to spike up to, uh, from 11.5 to 12,300. Uh, watch this. How do I know learn from working? Uh, let's see. At uh, about 12 o'clock noon, uh, nah, we didn't. Re we did spike a little bit. We went up to about uh, 11,900. So there you go, man. Uh, let's see. Frank says you're not. Hey, thanks, Frank. All right, let me look at a couple more comments on the prior video. All right, Radiant Lunatic says trading crypto is like juggling knives. Thanks for showing us how to avoid getting slashed. Hey, you're, that's a good analogy, man. You're right, it is. Uh, Simon Richard says awesome analysis. Thank you. I'm a newbie, and, um, and your explanation is very easy to follow. I've drawn the exact same chart of myself on trading you and followed your step by step analysis. Great way to learn and understand. Thank you. Well, thanks, uh, Simon. I appreciate that. Uh, Cardano Green says my my digital clock is never right. I've made it tone base. Hey, man, no comment. No comment. Uh, Kevin Roberts says buying under uh, 10.8, hoping for 10.6. Thanks, bro. Have a great holiday with your family and we'll send you tips when we get past 12k hey thank you kevin i appreciate that man truly do and happy fourth to you as well man happy independence day um vladicus radicus says or yeah radicus says uh and the cme gap is filled what comes next uh we discussed that made a whole video on it man but uh yeah we're just waiting to get some confirmation um above this uh, major major area of resistance as we uh, i talked about it uh connor c says thanks for the great ta work and i've been watching your channel for about one month now made my first trade when btc dipped below 10k and went long made a tidy profit at 11.5 and very happy with my first trade in crypto since 2017 bull run thanks for your excellent ta and will be a loyal subscriber with i dip my toe back into the crazy crypto market and as we hopefully progress into the 2019 bull run yeah yeah, man. Thank you very much, Connor. I really, really appreciate that. Thank you. And thanks for letting me know. Keep me updated, man. I really do want to know how you guys are working um, or how you guys, how this is all working out for you guys. And um, if, uh, um, if you're, uh, what you're learning here is helping at all and give me some tips. Give me, uh, let me know what, uh, what you guys need and how I can help and uh, happy to answer your questions. All right. Grant Lantern says, uh, thanks to Apple Art. Uh, you should do a collaborative video. Hey, I'm open to it. Um, I think we have very different schedules probably, and I wouldn't even know how to begin, but, uh, yeah, maybe so. Uh, Optical Art, man, I really do like him, man. He's a great guy. Uh, Crypto Mason says, uh, as always, awesome tech working. Thank you so much. Thank you, man. Um, Arkansas says, I've been, oh, by the way, guys, um, if you aren't following Optical Art, uh, by all means, guys, and I know a lot of you guys are, came here from his channel. He recommended me, and I would rec him, recommend him right back. Uh, he takes a lot of flack. Um, he does uh, fib circles. I'm more of an old school trader. He does uh, fib circles, and it's very interesting approach. I mean, I would say, I, I, I don't get cautioned in any one technique um, at all. It can it can kind of blind you if you if you get blinded from the forest for the trees. Um, it's uh or miss the forest for the trees, I should say. Uh, so it's it's a little bit difficult if you do get blinded into any one technique, but I do enjoy his technique. I do enjoy his fib circles, um, and they uh, they are very very interesting, and very often uh, very often are uh, very, are very relevant. Uh, so let's see. I, I, anyway, I would recommend you follow him if you aren't. Uh, Arkansas says, I've been following you for a very long time. Thanks uh, for continuing to make these videos. I've learned a lot. Since the bull run, uh, Monero has been one of the most un um, underperforming coins. I've been reading up on this, and according to some insiders, institutional money is slowly but surely accumulating, and that is the chart setting up for a breakout towards the upside, also given the fact that this is really the only true privacy coin, which is what Bitcoin was really intended for. Once people realize this and the only coin that offers real protection, the price of Monero will blast off and outperform the other cryptos can you take a look at the monero usd chart and offer your analysis yeah i can take a look all right looking at uh, monero to the us dollar here um yeah it, it certainly does look like it wants to make a comeback in fact let me pull out here to the weekly yeah pulling out here to the weekly it does look like it wants to make a comeback in fact it does have a a, a similar chart to bitcoin in that uh um we do have a nice rounding bottom here. That is a bullish sign. Now it does have a lot more work to do than Bitcoin does. We really do need, need to take out this uh, 121, uh, which it looks like it did try very, uh, yeah. So I would say, let's see. I would say this is an extremely relevant zone right here, which it came up and almost wanted to test it. I mean, this is where we found support basically from June 2018 all the way until July 2018. So basically for two months broke down, support turned into resistance. We had that hard breakdown until we uh, came down to the 2018 low of about 3760 and we're coming back up and testing it now. This is going to be a major uh, a major test for Monero. If it can get above this uh, 2230 zone decisively, um, I would say a daily open and close above 2230. I would say that it probably wants to continue up to at least 
uh, at least the 236. Uh, this is looking at the swing low to the swing high, or excuse me, the swing high to the swing low. It's going to at least want to come up and test the 236, which is right around 138. Let's call it 139. Very likely it'll push up to 140 as a good psychological. Um, but uh, above that, the next major target would be this. This actually, I like this fib. This fib, uh, this fib would provide a next major target of. Well, actually, I'm speaking too soon now. Um, actually, probably about 165 would be the next major target if it does take out about 138. Now, again, we have not taken this out yet. does look like it may want to put in a potential cup and handle here, um, which, again, would be a bullish sign if that can get taken out. Looking at the weekly, we are bouncing right on top of the 21 weekly EMA. That is bullish. Uh, let's come back here to the daily. We know we are below the 21-day EMA. Um, However, it is finding support where it did before, right around 82.60. And, of course, it bounced up and uh, started turning uh, support into resistance as of right now. So I would say in the short term here, if we can break up above 92, 92.50, of course, we're going to find some resistance right there at the 21, which is at about 96. But if we can take out that, uh, if we can take out, ni let's call it 90, 90 Actually, I'm going to call it 98. If we can take, if we can open and close above 98, a four-hour open and close above 98, I would say it very likely wants to take another shot at this 118. Um, but it's got a little bit of work to do in between now and then. Now, to the downside, it may it may trade this range temporarily. If we get a four-hour open and close below. Uh, below about 82 let's say if we get a four hour open close below 82 at that point it, we may see a very quick drop down to about 68.50 we have to wait and see how it plays out right now it's kind of trading a range and i can see it breaking in either direction but overall it does look like a fairly constructive chart overall it does look like it's trying to make a comeback and we'll wait and see kind of how it plays out hopefully that answers your question uh let's see going into chad says thank you and have a great weekend you too todd uh, let's see, Lord of the Turtles. This guy, Lord of the Turtles. I'm getting rid of him, man. I don't know what his deal is. He's gone. Uh, let's see, Yaguli says, you are a safe for work version of uh, Crypto uh, Crown's Crypto Cave, whom I think is the absolute best TA. I'm very happy to have found your channel. Hey, thanks, man. Um, I keep hearing about this guy, Crown. I'm going to have to check him out. Um, but uh, I, I have actually listened to him, but I just haven't listened to him very much. From what I have, though, he's, uh, he's excellent, uh, from what I understand. Um, but uh, So I guess I'll take that as a compliment, man. Thank you very much. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap things there. Uh, quickly looking at Bitcoin, uh, let's see if it hasn't moved. Nope, still the same direction, guys. So uh, targets remain. I'm going to wrap things there. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, please let me know in the comment section below. As always, would appreciate an upvote if you have enjoyed this content. Till next time, guys, please trade safe. Take care of yourselves. This is working. Signing up.